Why would anyone want to be led by you? This is the single most important question you need to answer if you're going to be successful, if you're going to be innovative, if you're going to be exceptional in this age of disruption. J.P. Paulus is one of the highest rated lecturers at the prestigious Kellogg School of Management's Executive Education Program. And an internationally renowned thought leader on the subject of emotional intelligence. Very dynamic speaker. He's a best-selling author and performance coach who has trained some of the world's top athletes and business leaders. And he now acts as an advisor to numerous Fortune 100 companies. He really kept us engaged. He's coached Olympic athletes, even the CIA. He is the co-founder of the Institute for Health and Human Potential. An entrepreneur who started a company that became one of Profit 100 fastest growing companies. And he speaks with individuals and leaders around the world, helping them improve their performance and understanding of emotional intelligence. His insights on the realities of performance have made him one of the most sought after speakers on the planet and a top advisor to numerous Fortune 100 companies. Please help me in welcoming the co-author of the New York Times best-selling book, Performing Under Pressure. Performing Under Pressure, the science of doing your best when it matters most. The man the U.S. Navy said delivered the best program they had ever heard. Dr. J.P. Dr. J.P. So what do you do when you're asked tough questions? What do, you, what do you do when you're under pressure to make difficult decisions or deliver difficult information to different people or hold someone accountable? Because what we know is that what you do in that moment, those pressure moments, has an outsized influence on your success. You can be highly effective in 98% of the moments you face and then you face a pressure moment when there's more on the line, when you have to deliver important information, make a big decision. And if you're not close to your best in that moment, you're in trouble. Why would somebody want to sacrifice their time, their talent, their career, their time away from family for you? If you were not here and your team was here, where would they put you on this continuum from exceptional to unexceptional? Where would you be on the line? Do you even know? That's an important question. What's the impact you're having on people, especially in those pressure moments? We know from our research that high performers, top 10% performers extract, this is a great, great stat, they extract, literally extract, three to five times more information from the same opportunity to learn as an average performer. Think about that for a minute. Even today, are you sitting on the edge of your seat saying, hey, I'm gonna take notes, I'm gonna try and get everything I can, or are you kinda of like, ah, I've heard stuff like this before and I'm kinda of tired, I'll look at my handheld. Literally, th that attitude will drive, are you a top 10% performer or not? The irony is pressure diminishes us, pressure doesn't feel good, we avoid then we get, don't get an opportunity to practice because what's true is that while in the moment it diminishes us, it doesn't feel good, when you take a long view, pressure actually helps us get better. I'm gonna challenge you to become a student of human behavior. Understand what do you do under pressure? What are your default behaviors? How does that impact everyone around you? Warren Buffett says it better than I. If you have an IQ of 150, take 30, sell it, get some value for it. <laughs> we study 40,000 people a month at our research firm. Here's what we observe. We get to 85, 90, 92 percent of what we want to say to that individual. And then when we get to that difficult part of the conversation, the last eight percent, here's what happens. As opposed to approaching that conversation, I start to notice that they're getting agitated. Why? Because they recognize there are consequences attached to where I'm going in this conversation. They're getting agitated. I'm getting infected by their emotion. And as opposed to approaching that last 8% conversation, I avoid that last 8% conversation. And here's the worst part. I delude myself into thinking I had the last 8% conversation because I talked about most of the stuff I wanted to talk about. But I conveniently left out that really tough stuff. We never had the last 8% conversation. George Bernard Shaw said the single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it has taken place. It never took place. So not only do we feel before we think, they feel before they think. That's important. So that's why we need to connect with them before they can even hear us, right? That's why this whole idea of listen first 
And, you know, so they feel heard is so important because once they feel heard, they can calm down and they can hear us. I mean, why do people yell? It's because they are not feeling heard. First, prepare. Prepare, prepare, prepare so that you walk into a pressure moment and you have a confidence because you know you've been there before. You've learned tools of mental rehearsal, which is one thing that you can learn easily. You know what to do when you drop markers. You know not to take it personally, not confuse impact for intent, so you're prepared. And now when you're in this moment, this pressure moment, there's a greater probability that you will be courageous, that you'll take the opportunity in that moment and step in and do what's difficult. Have the last 8%, admit the mistake or do whatever it is. Because what we know is that it's not luck, it's those people who've really prepared and then they're not afraid to take that risk. Thank you very much.